As a mobile game developer, thinking about how to promote your game, how to get more players, how to increase engagement, you've probably considered or perhaps tried influencer marketing. But has it worked? If you haven't tried it, how do you start? These are questions that are very important to think about and approach from a strategic standpoint. So I recently had a conversation with Sandy Smith. She is the social media content manager at Yoda One Games. Very interesting, very insightful, all about how to strategically approach the KOL question, right? How do you work with influencers? So enjoy the conversation. Let's get into KOL marketing. You mm -hmm. said before that KOL marketing is paid, yes, but not considered to be UA because right. of the dynamics of KOL marketing. So right. my question is then, okay, same person, generic studio with game they want to promote. Right. Social media plan, got it. What about the, how do we approach KOL marketing in general? And then what do we do? All right, yes. So I'm gonna be honest. It's tricky. <laughs> it yeah. is not easy. And that just comes from you're working with somebody else, right? Like it's not up to you at this point anymore. It's up to the influencer really to sell your product. But it is up to you to try and find the right fit, which again, can be tricky because, um, so a mobile game YouTuber, right? There are mobile gamer YouTubers out there. Um, they make videos on all kinds of mobile games. So what differentiates your game from all the other games they post about? Now, I'm not saying it will not have a great return and you should definitely work with them, but you should also, again, work, try, try new things. Again, work with the tech influencers, work with um, lifestyle influencers, because ads that stick out to people might do better. Right. So so maybe there's a sometimes a bit of a red ocean effect with those mobile game streamers or content creators where it all starts to just look like a, just another one of those and the ROI is lower. But, right. you know, if you ask Martha Stewart to mention you uh, or something, right. then this is her right. first time ever talking about a game, it's going to... That's it. That's not a good example. So just throw it in there. My first name I, I thought of. Uh, but, you know, thinking outside the box, essentially. Right. Think about what your audience is consuming right. rather than right. assuming yes. that you should go to a specific type of, of KOL. I wouldn't so much focus on your current audience. Definitely look oh, at okay. age and gender and things like that. But kind of the goal of influencer marketing is to move to other audiences, right? Your audience already plays your game. Your audience would be the people potentially who would want to play your game, right? Maybe I guess, we could clarify that. Yeah, cl could you clarify that? Because that's an interesting differentiation. So, what is the right. potential audience? When I'm talking about audience, I'm definitely talking about the people who are already following your social media. So they oh, are okay, already okay. playing your game, right? So, yeah. but I guess when you terms an audience of people who could possibly be playing your game, yes, you can definitely look for a similar type, like I said, in terms of age, gender, um, different styles of games they're playing. Like, for example, if you have an endless runner game, look at different, um, you know, endless runner type of games. Or if you have like a party game, look at other party games um, and see kind of what they're doing. But I do think the point of using influencers to market your game is to move to other audiences, to share your game with people who don't know it yet. Um, so finding an overlap of like, for example, age, but maybe not gender, um, if that makes sense. So finding like one overlap versus all of the overlap, um, I think would have the highest return. Well, this is a little more general than than influencers specifically, but there's an interesting overlap there. Um, we're we're working on um, a uh, a new article that we're putting out uh, with our our brands team and. We're talking about Fortnite and how Fortnite does such a good job of th of that, essentially how they can figure out that, oh, wait a second, 90% of the people who watch anime also play games. Oh, okay. So there's right. something there 
and then how do you okay now if we do a Fortnite Dragon Ball Z crossover right. we're going to see a lot of people who would be players come check exactly. out Fortnite yeah. if they haven't played it before because they love Dragon Ball yeah Fortnite um you know geniuses obviously <laughs> like one of the yeah. biggest games right um yeah. they do so much that their social media obviously is fantastic but also their community management is like next level they're on top of the scale if they're incredible with that um and yeah being able to realize that you know anime watchers are usually gamers and like finding that crossover yeah is really important I think it was a crunchy roll study. They did they actually did a study and found it was something like 90%, if I'm remembering correctly, yeah. of of people who watch anime play games, which is very interesting, right? Um, <laughs> and now they're doing the now they're doing the Mr. Beast one, so they're getting Mr. Beast now to share on his gaming channel because he's right. in the game now and there's a Mr. Beast right. skin for for chapter 4. And so Getting Mr. Beast to talk about you by putting him in your game, not a bad idea. Not an option for yeah. everybody, certainly, but that's a De just yes, an interesting yes, way yes. to think, right? To think right. about um, where the overlaps might be in demos. Right. Yeah. And yeah, like you mentioned, not an option for everybody. Of course, like you can pick the biggest influencer. You can pick to work with Mr. Beast, but you know, that's obviously way more expensive than working with smaller influencers. And I definitely, my suggestion was don't always go for the big guy. Hmm. Um, smaller influencers, they can have very reliable and quality fan bases. For example, streamers, right? Streamers have a very, very, very reliable fan base because these streamers hang out with their audience for eight hours a day, for example. Streamers are almost like friends to these people. So Who needs friends let's say when, you've got a, when you're a you sim? You have a streamer, right? <laughs> Yeah, kind of. Um, <laughs> no, I'm not saying that's true for everybody because there's. A, a, it's just the that's the stereotype anyway. <laughs> right. Let's say it. let's an example. You would make you would probably have a higher return on a smaller base streamer. Maybe they have, maybe they have 50 views at a time, concurrent viewers, versus a TikToker with a million followers. So that is definitely something to think about in terms of when you're looking to work with influencers, because there's influencers for every platform, right? YouTube, Twitch, TikTok, Facebook, all of the above, Twitter. Yep. I have found from my own experience, the TikTok return in terms of influencers is not very high. I'm not saying it can't be. So if you are doing influencer marketing, I would mainly fo focus on YouTube and Twitch or another streamer platform, like there's Facebook streaming or YouTube streaming or whatever. But the, um, the point is for streamers, there's a stronger a stronger bond and a stronger sense of community and maybe more trust. Yes. And that exactly. feeling of of friendship that you have right. when you're when you find a streamer that you really like and you have them on all day while you're working. It's a new type of relationship, which is I think developing and maturing, right. which is very interesting. Versus you know, a TikToker you watch for maybe 10 seconds at a time. Right. Right. Yeah. You just, you know more about your the streamer that you watch versus the TikToker. Um, yeah. For and sure. I watch, most of the TikTokers I follow are people who I think are just weird, crazy people. And it's not right. that I trust them. I right. just think they're, they're weird and crazy. So I like them. Right. I don't want, exactly. I don't care about their opinion about what I right. should play. Exactly. <laughs> right. Another thing about streamers is their, the quality of the downloads that they bring in will likely be pretty high, and especially maybe in comparison to UA or to TikTok or something like that. Um, especially if the streamer is playing that game, it's just this crazy phenomenon of watching someone play a game that makes people want to also play that game. Mm. <laughs> you know, it's just this crazy phenomenon. I've seen it even in my like personal streams, like even just with friends watching like, oh, that game looks kind of fun, I'm gonna download it. Um, and if you all play together, you know, there's more of a chance that you became you become invested with that game and you log on every day. There's two levels to that. Right. One is the paid level, right? The other right. level is uh, everyone's playing Among Us or everyone's playing uh, uh, Minecraft or something right. else that people just naturally right. want to want to play. It's different than right. paying a uh, right influencer. S that's another awesome point. So of course, you know, you can do individual influencer marketing, right? You can find this one guy, Hobie brings in a hundred downloads, X amount of downloads. But you could also look at the approaches trying to 
make your game popular on Twitch. You know, there's like the browse section of Twitch, right? And you want your game to be played by a lot of people. So then you can work with a lot of smaller streamers and then in hopes of having your game go higher on the browse section to where you'll, like you keep saying, you'll get more organic. More people will be watching. More people will be interested. Do I keep more saying people. it? I hope I didn't say it too many times. I'm not. Oh, no. I'm well. I'm, no, I'm, I'm just <laughs> trying to self-reflect here. If I keep saying something, that's an issue. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. That's a good, that's an, yeah. So that's interesting. So, but that is that, does that then go from, KOL marketing to another type of marketing where you're where that's that sort of viral viral marketing um, I would definitely consider that KOL marketing because okay. you will have to work with KOLs in order Especially if you're a newer game like You're trying to create that um, Twitch category, right? Like you're gonna have to pay people to play your game, but it's not likely. gonna be one It's gonna be Multiple, you're trying to right. get some buzz going so you got to right. get a few. Which also in that sense, you might need to have an event like within your game, like if that makes sense. And it's all kind of goes together. <laughs> uh -huh.